Yes, they're watching tea or coffee, and yes, the conversation continues on trust force, but we're going to be looking at it in a completely different light this morning. Okay, if you are in Lagos State and you are in Nigeria, we have a very insightful and very highly informative conversation for you this morning. Are you sure what documents you have in your car when you're driving? Are you not sure what documents you have in your car this morning? We're going to be clarifying all of this with a super guest that we have in the studio with us this morning in the name and person of Olushegun Ogubemide. He's a core commander, sector commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps in Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's How are you doing? To be here. Very honored to have you on the show this Thank morning. Thank you very sir. much. Thank All you right. very much for having us. So come in on the show. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we came across a tweet. All right. And um, it's basically this lady um, in person of Chichi um, underscore Arinze was giving people advice on Twitter on what documents to have um, when they are, you know, driving in Lagos and in Nigeria, essentially, um, to avoid them from getting into trouble. Um, with the FRSC or other officers, VIA officers or whatnot. Yeah. So we're going to be going through this list of documents with you and we're going to be clarifying some questions and also we'll be taking some phone calls for people who have questions about what documents they're supposed to have and um, whatnot, basically. So, all right, so the first on our list this morning is a driver's license. And this tweet says the first and most obvious one is your driver's license. This is the first thing they ask for once they stop any driver on the road. Do you have a driver's license? Is it expired? Make sure your driver's license is up to date. I think this is the most obvious one, really. <laughs> like you. How, how obvious. <laughs> In the sense that um, that is the prerequisite that is required for you to be called a skilled driver mm. on any road. Because mm. before you can go behind the steering, it is expected that you will have been trained. That's where you get your skill from. Mm. And the evidence of being trained and qualified is for you to be issued a driver's license. Yeah. And that's the only thing that authorizes you to be on the road. Okay, I know, sorry, I know, so, you know, in some instances when you are processing a new um, driver's license, they give you a temporary document mm -hmm. to hold um, whilst they are printing. Um, yes. Is that, how, how um, is that valid? How valid is that document? Uh, it's as valid as waiting for the original driver's license. Okay. You know, we, we have uh, two approach to acquisition of driver's license. We have the one for fresh, someone coming in for the first time, and the second one for renewal. Okay. I've been driving, my driver's license gets expired and there's need for me to renew it. Which we normally advise um, road users to get prepared a month before the expiration. Mm. Ideally, your driver's license expires on your birthday. Mm. Oh, that's, a, that's always a signal. Okay. So that as you are remembering your birthday, you check your driver's okay. license. That's the unique thing about that date. Okay. So if you happen to have your driver, maybe you are born on January 21st, when you are celebrating that 21st, mm. you go back to your driver's license to cross check. Oh, is it this year? Or is it next year? Mm. So that is the process. I've never noticed that. I'm going to take that. How many years do you have mm. like a driver's license for? Like uh, well, we have we have the one for three years, and we have the second one for five years, depending on if you don't want to stress yourself or you know coming up regularly after three years to get your driver's license renewed. You can take that for five years. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right, okay. let's talk about the next document yes. that she said. So she said, you need a valid proof of ownership. Now, she said something about, it is given among your car registration papers. This is given to you at the vehicle inspection office. Make sure you have this document after purchasing your car. If you bought the car Nigerian used, you need a photocopy of change of ownership form. So how does this work? Um, when you get your car new, that's chassis, if you may put it that way, you don't have any need for any change of ownership Sorry. because you are the first user of that vehicle. Sorry. When you are bringing in a vehicle new, 
like Belgium now is as good as uh, <laughs> procuring a vehicle new mm. because you don't have any contact whatsoever with wherever the vehicle is coming from. Okay. You don't need any change of ownership. But if I'm picking your own vehicle that you have used and I'm to transfer it for my own use, there's need for change of ownership. ownership. Because all the information pertaining to that vehicle bears mm. yours. Mm. So if your biometrics, your address, your phone numbers, and what have you, everything is, because number plate registration is personalized. Okay. So if I need to acquire your vehicle, if I don't change the details, if anything like a security breach will happen in future, it's you they will pick. Mm. Because all the details of that vehicle still. So for you for it to be transferred to me as a new owner, there's, there will be need for change of ownership. And obviously when they're doing the change of ownership, the license plates, which is the identity of the The license plates mm -hmm. becomes my, depending on okay. if you want to retain your okay. number plate, okay. I have to go for a new number plate. Okay. But if you want to release the number plate along Always, with the vehicle, yes. I need to change all the information okay. pertaining to that number plate. Okay, interesting. okay, interesting. All right. all right, so the next one we have is um, on insurance. So this reads, you need your insurance certificates. This is just 5,000 and can be gotten um, and can be gotten by the license officer or you can go direct to Nikon in insurance to get yours done. I hear this 10,000 naira fine if they catch you without these documents. P.S. I advise you get comprehensive insurance for your car. Is it actually a ten thousand naira fine if, for instance, the S R F R C catch somebody without um, insurance? For F R C, you know we have the the laws of uh, federal is different from the states yes. okay. when it comes to traffic offenses. Okay. For for us, if you don't have your driver's license. Be see that fake or you don't have at all is a ten thousand error fine. Okay. Interesting. Okay. You understand? And um, same goes with the documents. If you have forged documents and what have you, it's always written at the back of our tickets mm. when you are issued. So you can't be deceived. You can't be confused. Mm. It's glaringly written there. Okay, this is the offense you have committed. This is the fine. So nobody can get you confused. There's no ambiguity about it. So, how, how is this? All the documents that are required, the validity is what is more important to FRSC. Right. With the exception of driver's license, if you don't have the card, we don't take photocopy. Mm. But for the sake of security, if all your original documents, that is the vehicle papers, insurance, and all that documents are photocopied, you can take it along with your driver's license. Because we know that when your original vehicle papers are taken along with your vehicle, it's as good as lost. Mm. Wow. And that's the, that has the rationale behind yeah. our decision. Because in those days, those were the excuses being given by people. But your driver's license being stolen does not take anything from you. Right. Mm. It right. does not affect your vehicle. But documents, when security agency sees anybody with original document, they assume it's the owner yes. of the vehicle. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. the area of security that we got passionate okay. about. Oh, let us give the understanding to an average road user. If you have your vehicle papers photocopy, authentic, then or your original driver's license, we are okay. Okay. Mm. All that's right. That's very, I that's think that's fair. Good. That works. For yeah, everybody. it actually works. The average road user, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now this one talks about a certificate of roadworthiness. So it was mentioned that you also need a certificate of roadworthiness to avoid being hassled by the VIO and other traffic officials. It is the document that says your car is fit to be on the road for a certain period of time. It's also renew renewable annually to make sure yours, so make sure yours isn't expired. Now, um, how important is the certificate of roadworthiness? Uh, the certificate of roadworthiness is the one that gives the status of your vehicle. Okay. Is it worthy to be on the road? Is it, uh, is, is, does it meet up with the minimum safety standard? So those are the measures of, it's like driver's license is a confirmation of your skill as a driver. Mm -hmm. Roadworthiness is a confirmation of the fitness of your vehicle to apply Nigerian rules. Mm -hmm. And the private is one year, where commercial is six, six, six months. 
Okay. All right. I'm guessing commercial is because obviously it's yeah, used. Yeah, it regularly runs yeah. the road and the risk. Of the, the people are, yes. you know, are more subject to, to risk yeah. than private. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we need to be sure that mm -hmm. that vehicle is worthy to be on that road on mm -hmm. regular basis. Okay. So what kind of things do the people who give out the certificate look for? What makes a car roadworthy or what doesn't make a car roadworthy? We, we know what the, the economic situation is in Nigeria today. All right. And so we can insist that everybody should be riding new cars. Yeah. Okay. So yes. even when we leverage on bringing in tokumbas or fairly used cars from outside the country, we must still maintain it to that minimum safety standard. Okay. And, you know, our commercial, Dr. Babu, just give directive now that all recreative vehicles should be taken off the streets. Mm. And this is where you know those that are having mm. the minimum safety standard. Mm. Why anyone that is less is recreative? Mm. Because minimum in the sense that your tires must be okay. All right. Not when the trails are already coming up, mm. coming out of the, the <laughs> it's as smooth as the head of a ball. Mm. Then you, you must have your wiper. We are going to rainy season. I've seen funny experience where a driver uses too well. <laughs> a commercial driver Very uses dangerous. too well. Mm. In, so in go place. out to clean the car. Not wow. go out. While driving, while driving, he brings out the left hand to clean. Wow. The, wow. So the, the hand become is an improvision for, for, for wiper. wiper. You can imagine the distraction. So you have side mirror as a truck driver, even as a car. And you know the role of the inner mirror is different from the side mirror. Yes. They don't play the same role. Yes. There's, a, there's an extent to which the side mirror can see the rear. Mm. And the, the inner mirror too has its own role to play. Yes. So you must have it. And the status of your vehicle engine, not the one that is mocking, the mm. one that is creating noise for the entire community, or the lightning system, where you don't know whether the vehicle is going to the right or left. Mm. You are confused. We, we, the, the, even the structures for lightning systems are not even there at all. Mm. Or the headlamp. Mm. And this vehicle will be on the road at night. Mm. And you see a vehicle coming, you think it's a motorcycle. Meanwhile, it's a truck yeah. that is coming ahead of you. I've been in a you. situation like yeah. that. So ah, dangerous. So <laughs> those are the vehicles we categorize as rickety. Okay. And the mother of all the sum submission of the rickety is when you want to enter a vehicle, you need to package yourself very well. Because yeah. you wouldn't know where one iron or metal from mm. somewhere yes, will hook you up yes. your clothes and get you torn if you mm. are not torn to the skin. Mm -hmm. So these are the structures we say we need to take off our road. Mm. Especially we have, you know, Lagos will go, we talk of having a mega city and, yeah. and at this age, we still see such vehicles on our roads. Is an aberration. Yes. I mean, I was going to ask that if this means that those buses, those yellow buses that some people actually take, doesn't have a um, certificate of roadworthiness because all these things that you've explained, we still have some of these buses that are operating at the moment, and um, especially some of these ones that don't have um, doors. doors or they would use um, something as the engine, yes. or then they do hot wires yes. for for, for uh, uh, what's that thing, ignition. Yes, yeah, to start the car essentially. So does this mean? That they don't have certificate of it will have been very callous for anybody to issue certificate to such vehicle mm. so it's just i just want to believe they don't have all if you get to my premises now you see so many of them impounded mm. if you get to vis office you see so many of them impounded mm. but a, you know transportation sector is a very dynamic one so as you are removing some from the system, some are that's coming in, just like well, yeah. look, the life itself. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? So that's why you keep running. That's why enforcement yeah. is 24 hours. You can't say I've finished it all. Mm. Because while you are admonishing one person, another person is committing the mm. same offense. Yeah. So there's no way, yeah. no, no institution will see a rickety vehicle and go yeah. and give road, uh, certificate of roadworthiness. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, for, you know, I really like this certificate of roadworthiness conversation um, because what I'm really picking from this particular certificate is really the safety of other road users. You know, having your headlamp, a complete set of headlamp when you're driving at night is important yes. so that the car in front of you or behind you knows that it's actually a full car. And, you know, so some of these, some of these bus drivers are probably not aware of these um, safety measures. So do you think that maybe they need to be sensitized, sensitized on this issue or maybe stricter fines need to be placed on them? If you say some of the drivers are probably not aware, mm. 
I would say something is wrong. Mm. Because before you can become a driver, you must have gone through driving school. Yes. You must have been tested for proficiency. Okay, yes. The test for proficiency means it's not just driving. All other things that goes with it, the vehicle maintenance, how you check your vehicle, how you make sure you have the first parade, you have the uh, midday parade, you have the uh, last parade. Yeah. The parade is, is all about your vehicle. Mm. We are going to stop you a little bit because we have a caller, have a caller. right now. All right, so we have Esther from Lagos. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Esther. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, too? We are fine, thank you. All right, so I'm guessing you have a question. Okay, I just want to um, appreciate the fact that you're having this conversation this morning because it's very, very important. Thank you. Indeed, it is. <laughs> and this can help reduce the rate of accidents that are occurring on roads in Nigeria. Thank you. I would also like to appreciate that the presence of a call commander in the studio this morning. But Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for calling in, Esther. The phone lines are open for you to ask questions and also talk to the call yes. commander that we have on set this morning, Olusegun Ogunbe Mide. And the conversation we're having this morning is on important documents to have in your car now um you were you yes were we, saying something. we before we cut you off sir we're uh, talking about um sensitizing something that's you when you talk about sensitization like i was just trying yeah. to narrate it's not just about sensitization mm. where were you coming from as a driver you were taught the codes it's like telling me to sensitize a driver right now about the, the, the codes. Yeah. <laughs> then something that's is something wrong. something you should already this know. is something you ought to have been yes to taught yeah. in the course of your driving, driving lessons. lessons. Mm. And when you get to the point of proficiency where the VIS would confirm whether the school you pass through really pass through you. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't imagine, like we used to cut jokes <laughs> in those days when we were lecturing or giving lectures or training to drivers, that you can't imagine me on the road with another driver that sees a sign saying narrow road ahead and he would rather celebrate Mr. Governor for mm. decorating Lagos. Mm. Mm. Because that narrow, that signal, is not sending message to him as a guide for being on the road. It's like, oh, Lagos State is decorating road with beautiful structures. Mm. And there's the same person you, 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 you share the road with. Mm. So you going towards a narrow bridge, you expect that the man from the other side too will understand and slow down, but you still see him coming with the same mm. speed. So these are all the rudiments we mm. ought to have passed through while in driving school. Yeah. So, and after the proficiency test, before we now go to issuance of, but all the same, all the same, we agree, you understand, we yeah. agree that we might not, we still have these people that slip through that window yeah. mm -hmm. and are still on the road. Yeah. So that's why sensitization, regular yeah. one, is still very important. The, sorry, sorry to cut you yeah. off. Is, does education have a role to play in this ignorance? Ah, wonderful. When you, when you say education, what, what are we all living on? Okay. It's education that is sustaining us as human beings. Okay. Because at times when you were born, it ends there. Mm. You get to another stage. You get Continuous. so different stage requires yeah. different education, yes. mm. and that's what driving school is also about too. Because when you get through from driving school, you meet different set of people on the road. Mm. Well, sorry to cut you again. We have another caller, Shola from Ibadan. Good morning, Shola. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, yeah, I want to know what is the core responsibility of an FRC officer is to inspect documents or to confirm if you have a driver license. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ola. He said, what is the core? What did you, what was your question again, please? Hello, Shola, can you hear me? What is the core responsibility of an FRSC officer? Is it to inspect the driver's license or to okay. inspect Check documents, documents yes. of a vehicle? Okay. Um, when you talk of the role of FRSC, or let me say his relationship with uh, documents of vehicles, mm -hmm. how was his uh, hand 
to a justification, if okay. I may put it that way. Apart from driver's license, I have little or no relationship. Driver's license and uh, insurance, I'm uh, sorry, roadworthiness now. Right. Because roadworthiness is the one that confirms the status of your vehicle, mm. whether it's fit to be on that road. While the driver's license is the one that confirms that you are fit to drive. But FRSC will not stop you primarily to start asking for your roadworthiness and insurance mm. if you have not committed, if you have not suspected an offense. Okay. Mm. There's a way you drive, and I want to be sure you are a real licensed driver. Mm. I'll stop okay. you. I say, can I have your driver's license, sir? So if you don't have it, it's like a time bomb on the road. And for me to ask for your roadworthiness, maybe I notice your lightning systems are not working. Your wiper is not working. Your tires are gone. That means the vehicle is not fit for, for the road. So most time, the request for vehicle papers is in lieu of your vehicles. Okay. Because when you have committed an offense and I need to sanction you, the vehicle papers is retained to enable you to continue with your daily business. Right. But where you don't have the original vehicle, uh, vehicle driver's license and vehicle papers now, I will have no choice than to get your vehicle impounded. Mm. But there's still another one that I know, even if you have your documents confirmed, that vehicle might not be allowed to proceed. Mm. Okay. Mm. Do right. you understand for, for the safety of other road users? Yeah. Like now you had a brake failure. It's mechanical deficiency. And uh, if you have all the papers in the world, how will I allow you to still continue with the vehicle exactly. that already failed break? Very dangerous. I will have to that's, impound that vehicle. That's yeah. We have another question from, this is now Shola from Ibadu. I has another question for you this morning. Good morning, Shola. What's your other question? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Officer. I appreciate the way you reacted to the question. But the truth is, um, many a times we, 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 we just see OCC uh, officers putting us over and asking for documents. Do I have the right as a citizen of Nigeria to refuse that request? That's one question. Like to, to deny him of having access to my document because that is not his primary responsibility. I get to understand the fact that uh, uh, the Rose of Tukor Marshall, this is a body he released a press release in 2018 that the core responsibility of, uh, uh, of Rose of Tukor is to request for the driver license when they pull you over. And I find many of the four who are arrested to call Masha not doing exactly that. They go ahead and inspect every, in fact, they delay you for as long as. What is your call or what's your organization doing to ensure people like this can be brought to go or kind of correct this? Mm -hmm. Those are the two questions I have. What, do you have a place to correct people like this or is there a place I can file a complaint and then can I deny the access of a road safety officer from asking for my document, if I have not committed any offense, or if you bring it to my office, or any But the truth is, when you are in poverty, if any call myself, if any officer pull you over, he respectfully requests for documents. But sometimes you will face harassment from these people. So I want to know what you are actually doing to make these, uh, I mean, a, a normal, I mean, to help these people stop doing this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shola. So we you able to um, get... Yeah, yeah, I got already. the message where we've actually been receiving complaints from mm. members of the public All right. as regards uh, the conduct and comportment of our men. Right. And it, he actually mentioned the response of the commercial, Dr. Baboyo Yemi. FRC has zero tolerance to any measures of irrelevance or, let me say, misconduct right. of our men. We don't tolerate it. So... Like I said earlier, we must discover primary or suspect primary offense okay. before you are pulled over. Okay. You might not really know mm. as the road user. Like now, you are driving, you just press your brake and there's no brake lights. Or you right. notice, you, from afar, you notice the person was actually making call while driving. Okay. You understand, it's an offense. Some might not know that you've already noticed, so you pull him over. But ideal thing is for you to tell the driver the offense he has committed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which now leads to, may I have this? May I have this? May I, okay. I just mentioned now, okay. I could demand for driver's license and other documents mm. to book you so that I don't need to take your vehicle from you. Okay. It's only when you don't have all this that I will have to resort 
to having the vehicle impounded. Okay. And I will not appreciate um, resistance mm -hmm. when you know you have it. Okay. Exhaust him. Let's know why he's demanding yeah. for it. It's like a doctor asking you, you have a dick. Mm. And you get to the clinic and the doctor yeah. says, are you feeling pains in your stomach? You say, that's not what I told you. I'm talking about my head. Yeah. He is a doctor yeah. who have a reason for asking you. Yeah. Okay, I will let you finish, but then we have another caller. We have a boy took from Aquaibom. Good morning. How is Aquaibom this morning? Hello, good morning. Good morning. I'm fine, I'm fine. All right, yes, All right. yes. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, please, let's have your question. I'm fine. All right, so please turn down the volume of your TV set so you can hear us because uh, I can let, hear us. Let, let, me, let me already say what I want to ask. Oh. Yes, I think there's a bit of a yeah. delay and he's trying to hear himself. Just turn yeah. down the um, volume of your TV set. Yes, yes, we, we can. can. Please go on. Okay, this I want to ask, is it uh, important that road users have to drive around with, uh, uh, with a straight, um, straight airport in their car? Because uh, from, from weeks ago, I was, was asked, I was stopped somewhere when I was driving and then they call the federal road uh, traffic members asking whether I have, after asking several things and I was able to present those things, and they asked me whether I have the face head off. So I was confused. So that was the first time I heard a driver should be going around with face head off. So now that I see this program, I now have to ask whether it is important that the ruling that have to go around with the face head off. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Ekpo. It took from Akwaibom, Nigeria. Uh, can you ask? Well, it's a, it's a very simple one. Okay. <laughs> um, it's important to have first aid box in, in your, your vehicle car. for mm. your own personal use okay. and to assist other road users in case there's a crash. Interesting. But it's not compulsory. Okay. It's not a chargeable offense, not a sanctionable offense. It's not an offense that our operative should start looking out for to mm. indict you. Okay. We only advise you that, you know, we record crashes every day and we have our first responders too along the line. But if it happens to you or it happens to any other person outside, it is an added value if you can lend a happy mm. hand no, you can only do that when you have the tools yeah. that is required. Yeah. That's why we do advise that it's not out of place for you to have first aid box yeah. mm -hmm. in your vehicle, even yeah. when you even have your kids okay. in the vehicle with you. But it's not a sanctionable offense. Okay. Okay. So I need to ask this. So, you know, um, we've had callers talk about, you know, men that have um, harassed them on the yes. road. So what can you do? Who can you report to if you have mm. situations like that? Now I'm going to share my own experience. Yes. I've had a situation whereby we were stopped and then the... Um, okay, so before I ask my question, we have <laughs> Ayobami from Kaduna. Good morning, Ayobami. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How is Kaduna this morning? Can you hear me? Please go on. Yes. All right. Do you have any special, special, any special documents? For truck drivers? Hello. Hello, yes, we can hear you, Ayobami. What's your question? Like I was saying for truck drivers, do they have any special documents? The truck drivers have. Uh, all right. And, and what is the what is the pen the penalty for carrying overload? Hmm. All right. Okay. So do the truck drivers have special? Yeah. The documents? second question was quite unclear. Yeah. On um, what is the uh, what okay. is the penalty for, for carrying, carrying overload? overload? for truck drivers. Yes. So let's let's take it one, one after the time. other. <laughs> so the first question is who do you report to yes. when yeah. somebody is harassing you, when an FRSC officer is harassing you, who do you report to? When you are harassed or assaulted by FRSC officer, 
we don't report to social media. Okay. okay. All right. Because you end up damaging the system rather than getting at the person that misbehave. Mm. That person that misbehave is carrying the entity of an institution, mm -hmm. one person. So when there's a misconduct, the person that you report to is the necessary authority. Mm. Either physically getting across to the office, you don't need to make an issue. I've been, I've been, I've been, um, let me say, accosted by policemen before, mm. and I followed them to their station. Mm. And when I got there, I requested for the head of the place, and the problem was solved. Mm. But I could as well throw it on the social media and start um, embarrassing the officer or what have you right. without getting justice, because that is not the route to, to the management act. So what you do is, we also have our toll-free, 122, two, where you can call, is open to everybody. The people are at the desk to, to take your complaint, mm. and you can also write your complaint mm. through hard copy or wherever. And the FRC website is there. We have all the necessary mm. avenue through which okay. you can reach out. So you can also report the on the website. Yes. Interesting. You okay. can, we can, we can report there, get in touch, and send your complaints okay. to them. And the commercial also did the flag, flag it. Mm. Flag it is a concept where if you see anything that is oh. wrong, you can flag it. Let okay. people, let, let the office know what is being, what the atrocities they are okay. committing. Because we are well trained. When it comes to civility, FRS is one of the few organizations that does not joke with relationship mm. with mm. members of the public. We've been on the road for the past 33 years unharmed. Mm. And you mm. wonder how have we been coping? There's integrity, mm. decency, right. and that's mm. discipline. Okay. That's what has been sustaining us. Okay. So because Every day we see our men being sanctioned and investigated for one offense or the other. We don't tolerate it. Yes. Okay. And so for us, the avenue is reach out to the management, okay. not to the social media. The okay. questions are coming They're in coming and people in. are calling. <laughs> we have Victor from Joss. Good morning, Victor. Hello, good morning. Uh, Victor, please do call us back. Yes. The phone lines are open. We're talking about important documents to have in your car, and we are still having a conversation with um, Olusha Ogunbemide. He is the core commander and sector commander of FRSA in Lagos, Lagos State. State. Now, the next question I was me trucks. question, yes. I need <laughs> to know. Yes, I need to know. You are a very smart person. You have a very <laughs> smart memory. Uh, as regards the, the documents, the yeah. trucks, it's the normal categories of vehicles that are required, with the exception of whatever state or local government request for as document. And that one is not part of my own responsibility. Okay. Right. The okay. one, all those ones are not related to road safety. Maybe okay. they are all about revenue drive. Oh. Because you know okay. that some local government do stop them, states do stop them. That one, okay. I don't know what they call those documents. Okay. Uh, so for you to know about that, maybe they will have to reach out to the local government to know okay. the documents, you know, especially the commercial, well, virtually all the mm -hmm. trucks are for commercials. Yeah. But when it has to do with safety and traffic management, the documents that are required mm -hmm. are the ones that I've mentioned. Okay. The insurance too. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the third party, yeah. you have the comprehensive. All right. So those are the ones there. Uh, that All right, so sweet. talking about safety, Ibami asked a very question, yes. very important question. The second question is actually linked to safety, and that is overload. Yes. I don't know, is, is, there, is, there, is that in your field as well? Before, yes. before he answers that question, okay. we have Victor back. Victor from Just Good Morning. Good yes. morning. Thank you for <laughs> joining us. How is Just this morning? What age can a person have? Just in line with what age <laughs> are you allowed to vote? Uh, well. <laughs> it's 18 years. Mm, yes. It's 18 years. Okay. And for you to be a commercial driver, he's from 23, 25. Oh. Okay. So okay. You know, oh. you are, now you know, that's... You don't, the, the private is 18. Yeah. You drive your private. 
that's why you you are not expert. If you are if you are less than that and you are sitting behind the steering, I don't want to call it child abuse. Now it's like a toddler driving a tanker. Mm. Yeah. So you can imagine. So that, that the rationale behind this is uh, that maturity, and that heart of responsibility. Mm. Because when an old an old man or elderly person that has family drives a truck. He remembers where it's coming from. Mm. Yes. But if you release such vehicle to someone that does not have any responsibility, it's like it's just all about him. Yeah. Mm. There's nothing attached. Yeah. Very all right. So before um, Victor Cobb, we're asking about the safety when yes. it comes to overload yes. of trucks. Is that in your field? He's, a, he's an offense. Okay. He's a major offense. And I will categorize overloading in two ways. All okay. Right. We have overloading by, by commuters. That's... Okay. The passengers. Okay. And most time you get you get to know apart from the one you see physically, how if a vehicle is overloaded in the roadworthiness. Because the roadworthiness certificate will mention the number of vehicles and uh, the number of passengers a vehicle is supposed to carry. Like a saloon now is five. Mm -hmm. So when you see three in front, four at the back. Mm -hmm. So when you want to, when you see such and you want to book overloading, it's seven over five. That means it's overloaded by two. And the, the fines is also there. Mm -hmm. And you also have overloading by high terms. That's tonnage. Okay. That's that one you, you use the weigh bridge to know. That, okay. Uh, yeah, yes. So there is a particular ton, tonnage that this vehicle is supposed to carry. Okay. So when it goes, goes through the weigh bill, it will know whether it's above or below. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that have effect on our roads. Because when the tonnage is higher than the capacity of the vehicle, it affects the roads. Yeah. So we have overloading by that too. And it's the same offense is 10,000 Naira. Mm. Uh, and uh, we are forced to shed that weight mm. before you proceed. Even oh. after the payment of your fines. So you're probably to do away with some of those things. Yeah, like sure, yeah. yeah, that's why oh, we wow. do plead with passengers. Yeah. Like if you go to car park or bus or uh, terminals, mm. please don't allow them to force you to do what is wrong. Mm. Okay. To avoid inconvenience where you are on yeah. transit. Yeah. Because we have to share that weight. That so be very painful. Does, it, does the same principle apply to trucks? And they are overload. Yes. Um, is that is uh, so? If with, if, uh -huh. if it's discovered to be overloaded, okay. they've come. I've had arrested several. Uh, several okay. Yes, several of them. Okay. When this when it's overloaded, especially those that do have uh, all this above the cap mm. of uh, extra, mm. you make sure that they are they are all reduced. Okay. Okay. All right. Now. Out of all the documents that we've mentioned, we've mentioned driver's license, we've mentioned mm -hmm. insurance certificates, certificates of roadworthiness. Um, there's another one we didn't mention, which is a vehicle license and registration or registration. Is out of all these documents, is there anyone that is permissible not to have? Permissible not to have. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that even if you don't have it, I don't care. Yes. I, I, I just mentioned it to you. Mm. He's categorized. Okay. As far as my own business is concerned right. as a federal safety call operative, I need these documents for your own sake mm. when you have committed an offense. So okay. if I have the one that is authentic enough for me to mm -hmm. take in lieu of your vehicle, yeah. I'm okay with it. If I have your vehicle papers, I have your your driver's license, very authentic. I book you and allow you go with your vehicle. Mm. Right. But it's different from the approach from a policeman. Mm. Mm. The policeman mm. might be interested in your vehicle papers, insurance, and you understand, to oh, confirm that that vehicle actually yes. belongs to you. Yes. And they will do their check. So if you have driver's license and you don't have that vehicle paper, he, a driver's license is not the business of the, he's not mm. interested in that. He's interested whether this vehicle belongs yeah. to you. It's not you he's trying to identify. Because. It's me that wants to be sure that you are safe enough to be on that road okay, with, okay, with the okay. availability of your driver's license. Yes. So if a policeman is looking for a stolen vehicle, it's not your driver's license he's interested in. It's where is the original vehicle papers. Mm. And if it's claimed that it's your own, oh yeah, where's the identification? Then you could bring that to a driver's license and say, see, it's my name that is. So for me, I would just say, I need your driver's license. All right. 
your vehicle papers. Right. Mm. So if it can come, you know, come correspond with yes. the, the offense or the gravity of your offense, mm. I will yeah. allow you. All right. We have engineer Ade on the line from Songo Ota. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. How is Songo Ota <laughs> this morning? Good morning, my sister. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank Good you. Morning. Please turn down the volume of your TV. We can hear ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. There's a particular question that has been bothering my mind, which I'd like to throw to the police officer, the first thing we had to see is where is the driver license. So, I think to my own perspective, it's not the responsibility of Nigerian police officers to ask of one driver's license. Can you please, what is the perfect scenario in handling that? And another one is, is how do I, as a person, identify if my driver license is fake or an original? A policeman told me that the driver license I'm using is fabricated. One. So that is my question. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer um, Ade. Were you able to. Yes, um, I didn't get the first one, but as to get us the confirmation of a fake driver's license, All right. um, from the face value, of any driver's license. If you are not a professional, you might not be able to detect that. Mm. Right. But for you to know if a driver's license is fake is a process that determines that for you as a mm. person that wants to know my driver's license, whether it's fake or wrong. Mm. First, how did you get the driver's license? Mm. All right. If you sit down in the comfort of your home and release your passport to somebody, and at the end of the day, two, three days, they return your driver's license to you, it's fake. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yes. okay. For fresher, you must have gone through the tutoring for mm -hmm. about 26 syllabus days. Okay. From there, if because the driving school generates the code with which you can assess the porter okay. to get your driver's license. All right. So if you don't pass through this process, it's, it's, it's not something that they can bring a code to you. That process must be exhausted mm. from the driving school porter. So when that code is generated, you now assess the porter, fill the form, go to VIS, yeah. that I'm now trained, I want to be tested. Mm. Then VIS will test you and give you the proficiency certificate, which enables you to go to MVA, Motor Vehicle mm. Administration of the State, mm. to make your payments. All right. Okay. And after the payments, you go to FRSC for capturing where all your biometrics are also taken along with your details. Mm. If you don't go through all this, and you have a driver's license, it's fake. Okay, mm. interesting. <laughs> wow. Interesting. I mean, we would like to go on and on really? with this interview because we're having so much fun. I'm sure been... viewers so would want to, <laughs> but... <laughs> I, and you've been, you've been, you know, demystifying a lot of yes. things that some people didn't understand. And we've been having a lot of calls, but we this is going to be the end of this conversation this morning. But we want thank to you. say thank you so much it's for sharing pleasure. with us and, um, you know, coming on the show. We hope when we call you again, you would come, <laughs> <laughs> you would come and give us more insightful uh, conversations. We want to say um, a very big thank you to Olushe Ogunbemide. He is the um, core commander and sector commander of FRIC in Lagos State. And of course, the conversation we've been having this morning is on important documents you should have in your car if you're driving here in Nigeria and, of course, in Lagos State. One thing that I have picked up yeah. this morning is uh, you have to go through the process, especially when it has to do with your driving school mm -hmm. before you can get mm -hmm. your driver's license. Mm -hmm. And all of these um, documents that we yeah. mentioned this morning, it's very important that you yes. have in your car. And also, if you want to be a commercial driver in Nigeria, you have to be about 23, 24? 23. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. <laughs> that's that's, that's very fascinating. Yeah. So if you're 18, you find somebody that's a commercial driver and the person is 18.
that person is not doing it's the not right doing thing. The right. Yes, and also, um, this is to our viewers at home as well. If you have any complaints, if you have been harassed by an FRSC official, yes, you can do. dial 122, two, two. which is also toll-free. You can also actually report on the FRSC Websites, website, which is also, you know, um, probably an easier way around for people who don't probably want to make calls or whatnot. Very fascinating. Thank you very much. For Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Okay. Or